Hi, I'm Bill, and you're watching the Astro Vagabond channel. So, you know, I had to, I had to share the story. Uh, last night I came out into my backyard. It was a clear night. So I was gonna work with my Edge HD 8. I'm chasing some elongated stars. I wanted to work on a collimation uh, procedure. I was gonna try and incorporate MetaGuide into the process. So I came out here and I roughed in the mount uh, using my pole master. And then, I, <clears throat> and then I was going to do use the Nina three star polar alignment to further refine the, uh, the polar alignment. Uh, I was using my B-Link U59 mini computer running Nina. And um, if you're following the channel, I put a video up recently about some instability I've been seeing uh, with my B-Link U59. And, you know, to be honest, I don't know if it's the B-Link U59 or if it's uh, what is running on it at times, uh, but I've just seen some general instability. And uh, prior to last night, I was running the B-Link U59 in the house attached to the uh, cameras on my um, Edge HD8, and everything was stable. Uh, everything was stable on a network, no issues. So, you know, I come out here last night and I uh, fire things up and connect everything. And um, the three-point polar alignment module doesn't want to uh, activate. Uh, so I'm not sure what that was all about. So I, um, I shut things down, turned off the mount, turned it back on. Um, and um, then it was still not uh, functioning properly. But I saw that there was another uh, beta uh, release. I do the uh, nightly updates, so I think I'm on uh, uh, 2.0 Hotfix 3, and I was running beta 004. And so I went ahead and I upgraded it to 005, thinking maybe there's some uh, issue that I'm chasing there. And then uh, I did that, and then when I brought Nina up, it started telling me, well, I needed to um, update the uh, ASCOM driver set. So, okay, I went and I did that. And then I know if I'm updating that, then I went to ZWO to look for any driver updates there. There was a newer version, I updated that. And so I kind of went through that process, bring everything back up. And um, I tried to get a uh, three-point polar alignment done and um, it, it, won't, it won't plate solve. And uh, then I started getting these um, error messages that they can't download the images from uh, the ZWO camera. So, you know, I'm thinking, okay, uh, you know, I started this process, uh, I don't know, around uh, 7.30 or so, maybe a little earlier, and I was getting after 10. Uh, I'm not really making any progress, and I'm thinking, well, maybe I can manually move my uh, mount uh, to point the telescope at some uh, star cluster or something. And then it dawned on me, you know, um, it dawned on me that I oh, am an owner of the uh, ASI Air um, Plus. Uh, I purchased it recently and I was using it on my Xenostar 61. I said, okay, why not? Let's see what, uh, you know, what I can figure out here, you know, First thing I want to do, you know, I figure, okay, the B, B59, uh, B-Link U59, let's take that out of the picture. That takes um, Nina out of the picture and takes out that maybe I didn't uh, update all the drivers I needed to update. Uh, so I took that off and I said, just for the heck, I'll put the ASI Air on uh, connected things. And um, with a minute, matter of minutes, uh, I was done with my polar alignment. Um, you know, no issues. Everything fired up. It cooled the camera down. Um, I went into, uh, there's a setting to have uh, continuous looping on the preview. So uh, I got my polar alignment done. 
And then I went in and I uh, moved to uh, the Heart Nebula and there was a bunch of stars there. So I started a, a preview of, uh, I think I was doing 15 second uh, exposures uh, looping. And so that enabled me to then uh, get my collimation done. And then I started imaging um, to uh, image 1805, IC 1805 using my HA filter and, and it just worked. You know, everything just ran. Now, this was important to me because I'm trying to chase why am I having these elongated stars and um, it, you know, do I have tilt? What, what's going on? Is there something wrong in the image train that's out of alignment? What is it? So. Um, I was able to confirm that my collimation was good. Uh, just doing it manually, not even using a meta guide or anything, just kind of maybe the old fashioned way of, you know, defocusing the star and trying to center the donut. Um, and, uh, you know, I think I got it pretty good. And uh, so I did a couple of images and I'm, I'm still seeing uh, some elongation. And then I said, okay, well, that's my ASI 294MM Pro mill. If I have some sensor tilt there, uh, let me put on my uh, 533MC Pro camera and see what I see when I try an image with that. And uh, basically, I got the same elongation consistent throughout the field, kind of from the lower right to the upper left using the 533. So maybe both sensors could be tilted in exactly the same orientation. I, I don't really know. I think there's something go else going on. Maybe it's, uh, you know, I still have to work a little bit more on my back focus. Um, I did refine the, uh, um, the stars by adjusting uh, my uh, guide scope, my ASI 174mm uh, Mini. I uh, moved it up a little bit and it kind of, uh, uh, better define the stars uh, for for guiding in that, but the the whole point is you know um, with the ASI Air uh, no issues and in a matter of minutes I was able to get my polar alignment done. I was able to you know go to an area of the sky with a lot of stars and defocus and get my collimation done, and then I was uh, shooting images you know, uh, with my uh, uh, filter wheel and filters. Um, so, you know, what am I think, you know? You know, am I kidding myself, you know, trying to get the B-Link and Nina going? Um, why put the extra effort in? You know, when I just slap this thing on and in like 15 minutes I'm imaging uh, and everything just functioned fine. Um, so I don't know, you know, I sit here kind of right now and, um, you know, trying to think, okay, so what's my path forward? So what I did a few moments ago, I went in and I ordered another ASI Air Plus. And um, what I think I'm going to do is I'm still, still going to work to figure this issue out. Why am I having this instability? Uh, I'm going to go back through and make sure all the drivers that need to be updated um, are uh, updated and um, I'm gonna mount this back on here uh, but I'm also gonna when I get the new uh, ASI Air Plus I'm gonna mount it on top of my Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box Advance so if I start to run into any issues uh, with the B-Link uh, Nina configuration on Windows 10 uh, I'm just gonna flip over to the uh, ASI Air Plus. And I think I'm gonna kind of live that way a little bit. Now I placed the order today. It is the uh, 4th of uh, November and uh, the vendor says the earliest that it'd probably be is uh, late uh, November. So I think that's gonna be my strategy going forward. There are certain aspects of Nina that I like. Um, and, um, and I wanted to explore uh, Hocus Focus. Um, so, you know, I'm not ready to give up on Nina, but, you know, I had a bunch of challenges, 
Some of it related to the need when I updated uh, Nina to beta 005, it was saying I needed to update ASCOM and, um, and I went and I did that um, and uh, went to EQ mod, uh, didn't see any updates there. Uh, but I did update the, Zo the ZWO uh, drivers for the ASI cameras. Um, you know, uh, clearly there's a lot of layers of software uh, that uh, you have to deal with when you choose to uh, run Nina, where, you know, one of the beautiful things I think about the ASI Air Plus, it's kind of like Apple in a sense, they were vertically integrated, they controlled all the layers versus in the old days when you were trying to run Windows and you have all these third-party components and have conflicts and all that kind of stuff. I, I think them staying uh, uh, vertically integrated and only uh, allowing their own products where they control the uh, software and product development life cycles is, is actually a bonus. Uh, yeah, you can't run a QHY camera but I think that the ZWO product line is strong enough where you can live pretty well. Now, one thing is they don't have a rotator. Uh, that would be a nice uh, to have. And again, that is one reason why maybe I'm going to continue to best time in figuring out what's happening with my B-Link and Nina and Windows and all that, because maybe I, I want to put a, a rotator uh, on this uh, device down the road. So, uh, but, you know, this, this box is ridiculous. I mean, it's just strictly ridiculous how uh, straightforward and, uh, and the beauty is its simplicity. Now, you know, I don't run a dome. I don't have a roof that has to come off, you know, and uh, I see where a lot of the value is for uh, many imagers and why, uh, Nina is probably the right uh, solution for them. But for me, you know, I'm a traveler. I go to dark sites. I have two scopes. Um, you know, I don't have domes. I don't have any of that stuff. Um, you know, the ASI Air Plus may really just be enough. I'm not seeing uh, any, any cons really yet based upon my equipment. Uh, configurations for the Xenostar 61 and the uh, Edge HD. So anyway, I just had to share that story, but you know, I spent like three and a half hours trying to figure out the B-Link and Nina and driver up, upgrades and all that. And within 15 minutes, I think I had my first image of IC1805. Um, and uh, the other thing is uh, my backyard is so constrained when, uh, when the ASI Air rotated my mount uh, 60 degrees, uh, there were basically uh, wires. Uh, let me show you here. This is the area where my mount was, and if you look up here, all these wires. And uh, I do think that uh, the scope uh, was shooting through those wires in a sense. And uh, it was able to complete the, uh, the polar alignment in a matter of seconds. So, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to, uh, I don't want to diss on anyone that's using Nina. Uh, I think the, you know, what I wanted to do is just share a story, a true story uh, about my experience. And, um, you know, I've used Nina for a year and a half and, uh, Majority of that time has really been trouble free. Um, so, you know, but uh, yep, yeah, I just ordered a, another uh, ASI Air Plus. Um, I'll keep uh, one piggybacked onto my Pocket Power Box Advance, and that'll allow me quickly to switch over between the B Link uh, and um, the ASI Air Plus. And we'll try that configuration for a while and see where it gets me. So anyway, uh, sorry for the long story, but I, I just, you know, <laughs> three and a half hours trying to sort things out. And then 15 minutes with my Edge HD8, uh, my ASI294MM Pro, my ZWO ASI174MM Mini and my eight position 
uh, ZWO filter wheel and my ZWO EAF and I am up and running in 15 minutes. So um, it's telling me something. And you know, maybe I have an emotional attachment to Nina. Um, you know, maybe because I had a lot of good times imaging with Nina, you know, and maybe that bond is, is really strong. And even now, going through what I experienced last night, uh, I, I'm, I'm not ready to step all the way away from Nina. Uh, I, I'm kind of taking a half step away by ordering a second ASI Air Plus. But anyway, uh, everybody's experiences uh, are probably uh, different. Everybody's configuration kit, you know, telescope configurations are probably different, and that calls for different uh, def different methods for uh, conducting your uh, your imaging and controlling your uh, your scope and mount and everything. But uh, going forward, I'm going to have two options on the Edge HD8. I'll have Nina available, counter any issues with it. I'll be able to flip over to the ASI Air and uh, I'll be able to do comparison of the images and the ease uh, to work with the data and everything. Now, one thing uh, I do like about Nina is the more robust uh, file naming convention, um, but uh, let that be uh, as it may. Uh, do I really need the RMS uh, identified in each of my files? I think at my level right now as a second year beginner, uh, that information, while might be nice to have, I'm not sure yet uh, what I would do with it necessarily. So anyway, okay, I'm going on too long. Uh, just had to share the story. Uh, this is a ridiculous device. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm glad I bought the first one because I would have come up empty last night if I didn't quickly throw this into uh, the mix and I was able to salvage some of the evening and uh, at least I was able to identify that my collimation is good. Uh, I don't appear to have tilt going on unless both cameras have the same exact amount of sensor tilt, which could be a possibility. So I got more troubleshooting uh, to do there. I'm going to work a little bit more on uh, fine tuning my uh, uh, back focus and uh, see where things go from there. Unfortunately, the next clear night uh, forecast for San Mateo is around the 14th, so I'm gonna have to wait for some of that. Okay, well, if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. As always, like, share, and subscribe. And wherever you may be in the world, clear skies. Till next time.